Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Brant Larson from Larson Wellness Center and I have an interesting topic for you on uh, today's video. It's about improving stomach acid. You see, one third of Americans are plagued by heartburn. We have 100 million Americans experience heartburn each month. We have 15 million people battle it once per day. And acid sales top $10 billion annually, so they're making a boatload of money off of heartburn. Now, acid indigestion involves an excess of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. This is what you've been told, right? I want you to stop because this is actually, for the most part, not true. I'm not saying in every single case, but the vast majority, this is not what is happening. And this mindset is going to lead to disaster because if you come in with that mindset, and you start taking the drugs, you're guaranteeing that you are not going to digest your food or sterilize your food anymore. Setting yourself up for all kinds of problems. And that's what this video is all about. The stomach acid pH needs to be about 1.5 to 2.5. What that means is that it's very, very acidic. Now here is the pH scale, if you're not familiar. It runs from 0 to 14. So the numbers down here, 0, 1, 2, 3, these are very, very acid down here. The numbers up in here, you know, 12, 13, 14, very, very alkaline. And right in the middle is a pH of 7, which is roughly what water is. So this is our scale here. Now it's a logarithmic scale to understand that. Logarithmic is very, very important because when you go from a pH of 1.5 to 2.5, it's actually 10 times less acid, right? Because we're going this way, more towards the alkaline side. If you went 2.5 to 1.5, it'd be 10 times more acid. Very important to understand because it's, you know, you think about it, you think, well, a 1.5 to a 2.5, that's only like one. That's only like one jump, you know? But it's actually 10, it's, it's tenfold because it's logarithmic. So a jump from one to two, tenfold, three to four, tenfold, okay? Now, carrying that a little further, we have 1.5 to 3.5. Again, logarithmic, so it's actually 100 times less acid. So a jump from 1.5 to 4.5 would be 1,000 times less acid. Now, the pH of our stomach should be about 1.5 to, you know, 2.5 at the very most. People are getting more up in this range though, 3.5, 4.55, right? 100 to 1,000 times less acid in their stomach. How can you, you know, digest your food with that? You can't. Yet we're being told that we are making too much hydrochloric acid, and it's just not the case. So here's the seven functions of stomach acid and why you need it, why it's so desperately needed by each and every person. Number one. Protein digestion. You have to digest the food that's coming in. You can't just eat it and expect it to do all this good work for you. No, you have to break it down so that your intestines, so your bloodstream, so your cells can actually utilize what, what you're putting in. So digestion is really important and it's a function of hydrochloric acid, having enough acid in your stomach. Number two, activating pepsin. Pepsin is the actual enzyme, a proteolytic enzyme, protein digesting enzyme. That's what it does. Hydrochloric acid activates pepsin in your stomach. Number three, stimulate bile. Bile comes from the liver gallbladder. I have a whole video on this, how important your liver and your gallbladder is. You don't want to get it taken out if you don't have to. All right? So when hydrochloric acid is, is good enough in the stomach, and it starts to move into the small intestine as, you, as, as your food moves through, enough hydrochloric acid will help stimulate the gallbladder or liver to contract and release bile. And if you don't have enough acid, it won't fully give the right signal. So you're not going to empty your gallbladder, you're going to get stones and all kinds of other junk in there, and you're not going to release these, these uh, things out. So stimulating bile is a critical, critical function and it's part of what hydrochloric acid sets the stage for. We have number four, stimulate the pancreas. The same thing as, as the bile, right? As the food moves into the small intestine, the pancreas gets signal if it's the right pH. But if the pH is too alkaline, it doesn't get the right signal. So the enzymes don't, don't get put into that food in that small intestine. We need these digestive enzymes 
to digest carbohydrates, fats. Okay, you've got to break your food down. And you need hydrochloric acid to run this machinery. Number five, activate intrinsic factor. This has to do with vitamin B12 absorption. So hydrochloric acid is what activates this so that you can actually absorb this. You need it. And especially many older people, as you age, by age 75, you're pretty much guaranteed no hydrochloric acid in your stomach. This is why people are so B12 deficient. They're not digesting their food. Number six, open and close the sphincters. A sphincter is a valve, okay? It's like a circular valve. It does this basically, right? The cardiac and the pyloric. Now the cardiac, so we have our stomach here, okay? And on the top where the esophagus comes in is a sphincter there called the cardiac sphincter because it's right by the heart here. Now on the bottom end of the stomach where it meets the small intestine, you have your pyloric sphincter down there. And these are pH dependent, so they're dependent on hydrochloric acid. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, the cardiac sphincter gets loose. It doesn't want to close right. So now you're not digesting your food. Your food is literally rotting in your stomach. All right? And this valve is getting loose, so it's not closing shut, snapping shut tight. So now you have rotting food, which creates acid, and an open cardiac sphincter, which causes acids to come up and burn the esophagus. That's how that mechanism works, right? And that's why antacids help, because they help calm that. But you're guaranteeing yourself to further destroy your digestion. I just had a patient in um, this week. He's been with me for about four months now. We've been working on all kinds of stuff. He's ecstatic, happy with his program. And he said to me the other day, he said, I don't have any heartburn anymore. I used to take six to eight tums every night is what he told me. He said, I've done that twice in the last four months. What, are, what is one thing we're doing? We're giving him hydrochloric acid. Now, I'm not saying just go out there and do that. Yeah, you've got to be evaluated correctly. But, you know, this is so important. You, these sphincters don't close properly in the wrong pH. Number seven, a big one, sterilize the food, right? Neutralize microorganisms. The best way I can describe this is that there's been studies on dogs and what they do is they feed the dogs rotten meat and a dog actually has more hydrochloric acid than we do. They're, they're, they're more so designed to eat even more meat and break that down and sterilize it. So what do they do? They feed the dog the rotten meat, they sacrifice the dogs, open the stomach, I know it's not very humane but it, that's what they do. And what happens is they open it up and look in there and there's no infection. There's no microorganisms. The hydrochloric acid content of the dog's stomachs neutralize that. That's why it's so important. So all these people with parasite infections, candida and funguses and H. pylori infections, you need to sterilize your food. Okay? And they're giving antacids to babies and young kids now. What do you think is going to happen over time? They're going to be loaded with infections. So what does all this lead to? I'm kind of alluded to this already. Leaky gut syndrome. Big topic right now, leaky gut. You need to break down your food. Okay, I've got whole videos on leaky gut. It explains more about that. Autoimmune conditions. There's over 200 auto, uh, autoimmune conditions right now. Number one, you've got to break down your food. You have to sterilize your food. Autoimmune people are full of infections. The body is trying to attack that. Okay? Parasitic infections, I find this in patients all the time. People are loaded with parasitic infections. I was. It was gross. I got rid of it. I feel a million times better now. Candida, yeast. A lot of people understand that one or are searching for answers on candida and yeast. It's not just about killing this, by the way. Hint, hint, there's more to it than that. That's why it keeps coming back. SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid coming into your stomach, if the bile is not secreted into the small intestine, you're going to get bacteria overgrowth. Okay, It starts farther up the chain. We have mineral depletion. You need hydrochloric acid and proper digestion to absorb minerals. Now, most of the food we have is mineral, de is mineral deficient anyways, but you want to absorb what you're actually pulling in, so you have to digest that. We have acid tissue pH. This becomes, it's because of mineral depletion. 
inflammation, another huge topic now, right? This leads to autoimmune conditions and all kinds of issues. Digestion first. Gas and belching. Well, you can imagine, if you're not breaking down your food, you're going to start belching and have gas, right? Because all these microbes are doing all kinds of dirty work in there. Acid reflux, of course, right? Bloating and cramping, self-explanatory, chronic fatigue. Well, if you can't digest your food, now you have autoimmune and you're inflamed. Your body is going to be tired all the time. We have rectal itching. What might that be caused from? Partly that's parasites as well. So people will actually have rectal itching. We have acne. Any skin issue is GI. It's your GI tract. It's not your skin. It's not about putting creams and things on your skin. It's about fully getting to the root of all the GI disturbance that's happening. Your leaky gut and everything going on in there. That's when acne will clear up. Dry skin dandruff. If your bile is not secreted into your small intestine so you absorb fat, you can't get oils to your skin. Okay, you need, you need to get oils and fat to your skin, but if you're not breaking it down, dry skin and dandruff. Adrenal fatigue, another buzzword. Well, I'll just take some adrenal supplements for that. Not the real answer. It'll help, right? Our adrenals are totally exhausted in this country. And there's reasons behind it. Digestion, heavy metal toxicity, infections. Get to the root of it. Hair loss in women, right, has to do with thyroid conditions. If you're not digesting your food properly, getting minerals, getting iodine, getting all these different things that you need, hair loss. Food allergies. Most of the time, it's not about the food, right? Our food in this country isn't very good anymore, right? There's a problem with that. But the reason why where there's so many food allergies now is, one, is because the body has leaky gut. People have leaky gut, so these big hunk of proteins are getting through, and the immune system correctly wants to attack that. It's not supposed to be in the blood. That's where the food allergies come from. Weak fingernails, hair, skin, and nails are a reflection of what's happening on the inside of your body. You have weak fingernails, you're not digesting your food properly. Body odor as well, right? You're getting toxic. It's got to come out somewhere. Bad breath, same thing as toxicity. Again, you can go to the website here, LarsonWellnessCenter.com, to learn more. Give us a call at the office. I'm Dr. Brant Larson from Larson Wellness Center, and I hope you learned something out of this video. I'll see you again soon.